Let's return to our main text, verse 17. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ. So when God made that covenant, it was long before of God. In Christ, which one? The law. So it was before the law. Of God, he ordained the covenant long before the law. This was confirmed, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul. So the law cannot disannul it, that it should make the promise of none effect. That is very powerful. So Paul argues right here, look at the time gap right here. The time gap is 430 years before the law, right? So tell the Jew this, if they believe that the law is required for their salvation, what was Abraham doing then? What was Abraham doing? And he got the promise of the seed based on faith con concerning his spiritual seed, right? We saw that. So concerning his spiritual seed, based off Genesis 17, and then we saw uh, the other passages, I don't know from the top of my head, but where God accounted to him for righteousness, we see that it was before the law, 430-year gap, and he was saved that way. So you can argue to a Jew right here. So you notice right here, there is such a thing called salvation by faith, not works. Paul did not invent that. Christians did not invent that. That's what Jews might accuse you for. But you can say this. No, notice there are parts in the Bible that person got saved by faith and there were no works involved. That is very effective. Okay, let's also continue reading right here. Uh, oh, oh yeah, concerning the seed as well too. The seed is based off of faith. And we already covered those verses on that in my previous videos, so I'm not going to cover that. Let's keep reading. 18, for if the inheritance be of the law. Okay, if the Jewish law is required to gain the inheritance concerning the promise that God gave to Abraham, it is no more of what? Promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. So if God gave conditions right here, then it's not a promised gift. When God makes a promise, it's going to be based on promise. My word on it, not like, oh, there's a handout. Yeah. See, that's the kind of God that they're worshiping then. Yeah, they're true. worshiping a type of God that's giving, a, no, there's a handout to this. No, God keeps his word on it. Yeah, well, it's done. He based it on promise. So this is a powerful concerning that you are Abraham's spiritual seed. He is your spiritual father. You are a spiritual Jew, and you are part of the spiritual line of Jesus Christ with no law involved, no works of the law involved, Amen. based on faith. And if you include the law, you break God's promise to you. And God is not a man that he should lie. All right, let's keep reading. Wherefore then serveth the law? Okay, so Paul, so then what's the point of the law then? If it's not required for our salvation in this case. It was added because of transgressions. It's because of sins. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. So you got to realize this. Now, I'm going to draw this out because that way you can understand it better. And I'm going to have to erase this part right here. So here's another part concerning dispensationalism, which is going to be important for you. As we look at the timeline of the dispensation right here, God said that he gave the law, right? When he gave the law right here and pretended, this is the cross of Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. And then now we're in the age where it's salvation by faith, right? So that means no works. All right, now as we come over here, I'm going to show you something. What was the point of the law? It was added because of sins. That's the issue here. Sins is the issue. Now remember, what can wash away and finalize the sin? The blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sin, right? It is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, because Jesus Christ died on the cross, what happened? There is no sin now. That's why we can have faith. But before, we don't have Jesus Christ dying on the cross during this time. So what can we do? That's why law is there that time. That's why the law was there, because there was no because look at that verse, till the promised seed should come, right? Is that what the verse said? The law was there until when? The promised seed should come. So you got to realize this then. When anti-dispensationalists argue against uh, sal 
well, no, the Old Testament saints, they did look forward to the cross. They somehow received salvation by faith, not by works. But the problem is this. The verse says, uh, the verse pointed out right here that the law was there till the seed should come. That's the problem. What are you going to do about this then? Now let's keep reading right here. It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. So God made that promise about the seed. Remember, who is the seed? Jesus Christ, right? So until that seed should come. And it was ordained by who? Angels. So angels ordained it in the hand of a mediator. Okay, so this law was handed down by angels. And there was a mediator. Who is that? It's referring actually to Moses. Look at the book of Acts chapter 7. Look at the book of Acts chapter 7. So some people, uh, normally they might think that it's referring to Jesus or God, but actually this is referring to Moses because God is making a distinction at verse 20, which I will explain later. Look at Acts chapter 7. That's why, why is it called the law of Moses, law of Moses, law of Moses? Because law would relate to who? Moses. That's what you're going to quite often see throughout the Bible. We're going to look at Acts chapter 7, and then we'll notice that at verse um, 32, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Now, notice that Moses, he is talking to the burning bush. Now, when he's talking to the burning bush, notice in verse 30 who this was. And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an who? Angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. That's why I see angels. It was handed down by angels. And then the mediator would be concerning Moses. That's why um, what you're going to find out is that's why God told Moses, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. Why? Because Moses was considered that representative, that mediator between God and the people. What did the, if people want to talk to God, who did, who did they do, how did they talk to God? Moses. They always told Moses, uh, beseech to God on our behalf. Talk to God for us. God, you'll notice he always talked to Moses to talk to the people, right? That's how God communicated with the people, is that he'll talk to Moses and Moses would talk to the people. So that's why we know that the mediator is Moses and referring to right here concerning the law, it would be angels ordained by angels. Let's also look back right here. Let's return back. Uh, actually, verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the what? Angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively what? Oracles to give unto us. So notice right here they got the law and they got the word from God through Moses by the angel. So that's what Galatians 3 is talking about. Okay, let's go back to our main text here. Galatians 3. All right, so let's, rev let's review verse 19. Okay, let's review verse 19. So remember, Paul's arguing at verse 18 and the previous verses that this is not based on law. This is all based on faith, the spiritual seed and the promise of this salvation by faith. So then they're asking right here, then what's the point of the law, verse 19? Paul's arguing right here, well, it was because there's still sins right here. That's the issue. Jesus didn't die on the cross yet. So sins are still the issue. So then that's what they're going to put the law right there. And when he gave that law, till the seed should come. Well, that's evident. So that's why God gave the law, because the seed wasn't there yet. So until the seed's there, then the law is done. Then we can go by faith and no works. Let's keep reading right here. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. So God, when he made that promise to Abraham... Remember, this promise is concerning the spiritual one, right? Where we Christians can apl apply ourselves to. So this promise can apply up to what? Right here, till the seed should come. So this definitely proves dispensationalism. If you think that it's always been the same from back then, this does not make sense, does it? 
Paul told you there's a law that's in between this time gap right here. Okay, let's keep reading. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of the mediator. Okay, so the law, we already understand, hand of the mediator, Moses, by angels. Let's keep reading. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one. So Paul's saying right here, in order to have a mediator, it's not just one person. You have to have two people, right? A mediator, by definition, is mediating between two people or two parties. So that's what Paul's arguing about a mediator. But Paul says right here, but God is one. See? Amen. So God, he doesn't do the mediation right here. Why? Because when he gives a promise to you, there's no mediator in between like Moses. When God gives a promise, it's him to you, done. That's what God did with Abraham. See, there was no mediator involved right here. It's just him, give the promise to Abraham, done. That's why Jews cannot undo this. That's what Paul's arguing. Jews cannot undo this because there was no mediator. It was not given by angels. It was just God giving his oath to Abraham. So that's why this promise during the Christian day and age is strong, it's available, and it's operating. You can't undo that. Amen. The law, however, had to have a mediator in between. So it's very different. 